New year, new attitude. Let's jump into it. You are now in the cut with your boy, Keith Jefferson. Greetings, Saints. This is God's bad boy, Keith Jefferson, coming back at you with another episode of In The Cut. It is 2021. New year, and I say new attitude. Because we have so much to be thankful for, because 2020 really was an interesting year. It was a tough year for some of us. For me, I lost my aunt and uncle, who I was extremely close to, and it was just a tough time. And the month of November was just a bad month for my family. But life goes on. We still have a lot of things to be thankful for. I thank God that both of them were in Christ. So I have no worries. So let's get into it. Now, we know that attitude is everything. No understanding that we really have to watch ourselves as Christians and how we view things and how we view things as it relates to adversity. Because people are watching I mean, they're really watching to see how we're going to deal with it, because as always, the Christian is always under the microscope. You know, are we that complainer? Or are we a praiser in all types of situations? Let's journey over into Philippians. And in Philippians, we look at Paul. Paul is in a predicament. He is really in a predicament because this is one of his prison letters. And understanding that it is funny because for me, I just cannot think of having my freedom just taken away from me like that. But the Apostle Paul did and his attitude was still high. His attitude was still on God in spite of. And in this letter to the church in Philippi, he took the time to encourage the people, even in the situation that he was in. Now, how many times have we been in situations that we even that we even just forgot to talk to God about the situation? How many times that we've been in some tough situation that we probably were rude to some people because we was going through the situation? And like I said, to begin this message, you know, people are looking to see how we're going to act in adversity. And this letter here, I think, was beautiful as it begins to talk about how to handle things. Paul starts out in first chapter, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus. In the Greek, the word servant is doulos. And that word word often means slave, a bond servant. So he's automatically saying that I am a slave to Christ because the sins of that you once were a slave to, you are no longer a slave to. That is no longer your master. The master that you're up under now is Jesus Christ. And I thank God for it. But he continues. He said to all God's people, holy people in Christ at Philippi, together with the overseers and the deacon, grace and peace to you from God, our father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, that is the typical entry of Paul as he's coming to the church. He's showing his respect. He's giving everybody um, their praise that they need to honor the positions in the church. But then he moves on. He said, I thank God, my God, every time I remember you in all my prayers for all of you, I will always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you would carry it into completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Now, Paul was thanked for the folks in Galatians, even though, again, even though he was locked up, he was in the clean, but he was very joyful and thankful for others. You're like, wow. How was he able to do that? Well, that's what the power of the Holy Spirit does. Because the thing about being thankful for others and joyful for others is you have to understand what Jesus was saying in the second commandment that he gave. He said, love thy neighbor as thyself. And when we're looking at Christianity, it is mainly how we live a selfless life. We have to make sacrifice. We have to go over and beyond in order to help people, to put them in satisfactory conditions and not often think of 
of ourselves because we live in the culture where it tells us that everything should be about us. Mm -mm. The Christian worldview is everything is about God. Everything is about others. Then it comes to us. So we always look into God and look into others first. So Paul was very joyful and being thankful for those at Philippi. As you heard in those words, they bring him joy because of the partnership in the gospel for the day, first day until now. Because the thing that made them have things in common was the gospel. See, the word partnership, koinonia, um, in Greek, it's a word that says that parties have to have something similar that they're going for. Or they have to have things in common. Because to have a partner or a fellowship, that means that you are on one accord. So if you're not on one accord, you cannot have fellowship. You have the vision. But fellowship is to come together of like-minded people in order to accomplish something. So in that, the partnership that the, he was talking about uh, was that they joined him in understanding the gospel and promoting the gospel at the church in Philippi. Now, this has to be an exciting moment because you're talking about an apostle who's spreading the word and to see a church grow and thrive by promoting the gospel that had to be an exciting moment for Paul. And it had to be an encouraging moment for Paul because, again, he was in prison. And while he was there, the church kept on going. And that had to be a wonderful feeling when you think about the things that that could have happened. But the grace of God kept the church going, kept the church preaching the gospel. So Paul was very thankful for that. The second thing I want to hear real quick, Paul found joy. In praising for others, going back to say, I always pray with joy because a lot of times we pray for situations. We pray for things. But I said before, this thing is about people. It's not about situations. It's not about things. We're supposed to pray for people. And in doing so, I encourage you to make a list of people that you know that need your prayer. You might be in the wrong situation. Instead of praying for that situation, pray for that person because Jesus is interested in the person, not interested in the situation because he's going to work that situation however he feels. Romans 8 and 28, he's going to work it out. But the thing is, is to pray for that person so they can have a transformation in the heart and for them to turn to Christ and for them to turn into his ways also. That is so important because a lot of things that you go through with people has to do with spiritual warfare. And we only look at the action and the consequences, but not look at the person and trying to pray for them where they can come to Jesus. And in the same breath, we don't thank God for them. And we don't pray for them individually when they're on the correct path that the Lord keep their hand on them. That's key. So Paul prayed for people. And that's something that if you're not doing, you should start today. Again, get a list. Write some names of people that you know who need prayer. Write them down. Post them on the wall. You know, get your prayer journal. Write down your prayers in order to keep that in mind. And the third thing about this new attitude is Paul Thanksgiving uh, of joy and prayer flow from the fellowship he enjoyed with the Philippians. See, when you're in a place with like minded people, you enjoy the time together. Just look at different groups of people. Look at people who are in sororities, who are in fraternities, who are in athletic clubs, who are in the motorcycle clubs, who are in auxiliaries in the church, who are in different groups in the church. They have joy in fellowship. Well, that joy is compounded when you're, when you're in fellowship in the body of Christ. Again, this thing is about people, enjoying people, talking with people, glorifying God together. Yes, salvation is singular, but it's also corporate. And that shared experience in rejoicing and being proud of to be in the family of God should be something to behold, should be something to be shared amongst the group. And I can't say any other things about that because that is that is so key as we move in order to transform ourselves because we have to love people. We have to. We have to love people enough to pray for them. We have to love people enough to share Jesus with them because the Lord desires for everyone to be saved. And when he gave us the great commission, that was our marching orders to understand, to be personable, to love people, to share with people. So that even in times of distress that Paul was in, he can just go back and remember these people. 
and have joy in his heart. And that joy in his heart lay, led him to pray for him. He was thankful for him and enjoyed the fellowship with him when he was with him. A new attitude, people. As we look at people, we got to have a new attitude going into this year. That's my two cents. Hope you enjoyed. Until the next time, grace and peace.